This story was about a guy named Chewie. A famous virtual reality game suddenly broke through and merged with the real world. Humans have gained the power to choose what class and race they want. His sister, Ju Yun, had an incurable disease, a cold disease that pushed Ju Yi to work hard and earn money for the hospital bills. He was only transmigrated to this body but eventually liked his new life. When the awakening ceremony came, everyone was surprised that their class representative, Ju Yi, summoned the god of light and hidden classes. He became famous after choosing the Saint Knight class, and everyone's eyes were on him. He even aced the examination that the top three universities crawled to him for a special recruitment. He went to Su Kang University and met different races and higher levels there. He encountered numerous problems and challenges as soon as he got there, but he gave everything to win for his sister's sake. He gained some friends and leveled up, and he likewise gained enemies. Let us watch the journey of the Saint Knight. It all started on the day when the class awakening ceremony commenced in the year 2624 in Lai Jiang City. People had gathered there as Luo Heng. The academy's second headmaster explained that this first awakening would decide their future. Summoners and engineers would find it hard for ordinary people to afford them. The students buzzed in excitement. The guy with a buzz cut scoffed and said he hoped to be a berserker so he could turn into a killing mash. Maybe this monkey was just afraid of dying. Many years ago, a virtual reality game named Eternal appeared in this world. With this game, more and more people entered because of the brand new experience and extreme euphoria from the battle. But one day, the surface of their world had expanded thousands of times. A large number of secret realm maps appeared, and countless monsters surged out that brought fear and despair to the humans. The line between the virtual reality game broke and merged with their world. Every human could now level up and change their classes to increase their power and fight the monsters. This guy right here is Jui, who was transferred into this world a year ago. His mother passed away before the time he could recall, and his sister Zhu Yun was affected by an unknown and untreatable disease. He was only a low-level priest, barely making a living to support them, so he had to sell their house and beg money from their relatives to keep her sister alive. The cost of living and medical fees was increasing, so he hoped to get awakened to a combat class to earn more money. The mage on the stage told everyone that every student they would call should stand in the magic formation. He held his staff towards the magic circle and activated it. The students were amazed by the power of a level 24 mage. The force from the activation was felt. Jui was amazed that this mage could earn at least in the six-figure range. The fifth class teacher, Lai Zhang Yong, called his students one by one. The first one to call was Zheng Cheng. He raised his hand and went up to the stage. Thousands of classes could be awakened, but only three types of classes would appear in this ceremony. In this world rampant with monsters, combat classes were respected the most. Life-type classes have the lowest positions. Zheng Cheng slammed the floor in despair as he had no combat class on his choices. Teacher Lai Zhang Yang called the following students, and when Zhu Yi's name was called, the students cheered for him as he was their class representative. He may have good academic results, and all his stats were pretty good, but anyone could be a dark horse. The sixth class teacher, Tang Tianjun, mockingly asked Lai Zhang how many students he had awakened in combat classes. He replied blankly, saying 16, but Tang Tian chuckled and said he has 21 combat students and some rare classes. They were dumbfounded when they noticed the class representative not moving in the circle. Zhu Yi's body was flowing with immense force. His eyes were closed, and he got confused when opened his eyes and saw his necklace floating in the air. He gasped when he felt the surging magic mana from the necklace. A red flaming aura burst from it. It swirled up into the air, which the system had detected. Once it was complete, a hologram showed that the strongest class support system had activated the rookie starter gift. He remembered buying this necklace in his previous life on a street stall, which also helped him through his transmigration. He didn't think that there would be more in the necklace. He had just received the protection of the sacred angel. The three classes that would appear in the awakening ceremony have a connection with the talents and skills they would possess. The others could not see the hologram, so they thought Yui was staring blankly as if he could not awaken in class. They all gasped in shock when the magic energy blasted through the sky. The impact caused an explosion that covered the sky in orange. They couldn't believe they witnessed a talent awakening phenomenon. A six-winged woman in a white dress emerged from the light. She flapped her delicate and beautiful wings and flew to the ground. Zhui could feel the powerful energy from the woman as he stared in awe. The orange-haired woman had her eyes covered, but the people were mesmerized by the sight of the woman, maybe because they could almost see the dark cave. The woman suddenly spoke as she held her hands up, saying the light was his belief in the source of his power. She dived in Zhui's direction and said the sacred light would always protect him and burn away all evil. 
He was left speechless, captivated by her calming voice. The woman disappeared into a glowing aura and went through his forehead, saying she would always protect him. The flaming symbol on his forehead was absorbed through his skin, and he screamed when he felt the searing, powerful energy through his veins and flesh. He was covered with his aura as if he were going Super Saiyan. Another three figures appeared. Everyone was shocked to see three unfamiliar classes in the air. One of the students asked Lai Yang what these classes were. He stuttered, still in shock, saying these are the hidden talents, the Mage of Light, the Sacred Priest, and the Saint Knight. Yi rubbed his chin as he looked at the three classes. He thought mages might boast excellent DPS but could easily be injured or executed as they don't have any skill to protect themselves. Priests have life-saving skills and resurrection but weak combat prowess and rely on others. Meanwhile, the Saint Knight was an all-encompassing class with a full skill set. They have defense, offense, and buffs. It doesn't excel in any field, but they have the talent of affinity with light, so he chose it immediately. The knight suddenly moved and stood up. It moved closer to him, making it obvious that he was only a roach size to it. It moved its hammer, swung it to the left, and smashed it straight to the ground while saying humility, honesty, bravery, and other characteristics and responsibilities of a knight should be embodied to pursue justice as a saint knight. Both of them got covered in holy light. He felt like his body got lighter as the energy flowed through him. The energy from the knight went through his back and successfully awakened the saint knight class. He became a level 10 saint knight and received three skills. The students ran to him, praised Yi, and asked him to team up with them. Teacher Lai Zhang pushed them off to make space for Yi. He smiled like a hungry ape at him and told him to go home and get some rest for now. He chuckled and said he should come to the headmaster's office tomorrow. Once he got home, he looked at his stats and noticed he had some unassigned stat points. He tapped it and thought strength should be a top priority, and the constitution came next to execute monsters more efficiently. Once he was done distributing the stat points, he could feel the energy boiling within his body again. After that, his first daily mission was activated to receive some reward. He smiled as he saw the huge rewards, and he accepted the mission without a doubt. When he tapped the button, golden halos appeared before him, and he was about to get transferred to a random trial ground matching his level. His first mission was to defeat a grady ancient rabbi monster. His body was teleported to the other dimension, but he had to take this seriously, as losing the mission would also mean losing his life. He was speechless as he looked around inside a mine. The cave was a little dark, and he almost did not notice the blood-seeking rabbi monster. The monster slashed its sharp claw at him, but he evaded it quickly as this monster's attacks were known to be reckless and impulsive. This would be his first time facing a monster, so he got excited about trying to fight it without using a skill. He shifted his foot and jumped above the monster when it charged towards him. His body was more agile, and his jumping power was much stronger. When he stood to face the abbey monster, he stepped back to dodge its pointy claws. He took another step back, making him smirk because the monster's movements were too slow for him. But he did not expect the sneak attack from its tail. He got smashed on the wall. When the sharp tail was pulled out, blood gushed from his wound. He felt his knees weaken as the blood dripped like pouring water. The rabbi monster growled and walked to him. He got too careless and too confident with his training in the academy, but luckily, his slow regeneration activated. He stood up, saying he shouldn't underestimate this low-grade monster. When the monster launched another attack, he swung his arms across and summoned a gold light. This blade of pure white was a grade C that would freeze the enemy. When it froze, Chewie jumped and grabbed the monster with his tiger pounce and ran forward, smashing the rabbi monster on the boulders, causing multiple stages of damage. When he released the monster, it crashed into a wall. He smirked as his powerful energy covered his fist and threw multiple blows on its chest. The ancient rabbi monster couldn't move an inch from the impact and eventually lost its life. After defeating it, Chewie was asked to choose a reward. He thought he wasn't in a hurry to increase his skill levels, so he decided to choose the 10 stat points and a basic sword. Once he had received it, his surroundings glowed and materialized into thin air. The trial grounds faded after finishing his mission, and he heard his phone ringing. He looked at it and saw he had to visit his sister in the hospital now. Not too far from his home, Zhu Yun was watching the news on the TV. The reporter was saying that a student had awakened a talent in a hidden class, but the TV suddenly turned off. She looked at the frowning nurse, who looked like she was in her menopausal stage. The nurse showed the paper and told her to pay her medical bills now, which cost 10,000. Ju Yun gasped in shock and asked if there was an error in the bill because it was only five before. 
The nurse crossed her arms and told her she had used a lot of medicine this month, and the nurses took care of her at midnight because of her recurring symptoms. She lifted her head and told her to stop doubting and to check the bills herself. She was saying that Ju Yun should stop going to a hospital if she couldn't afford treating such an expensive disease, but she froze when a big hand grabbed her shoulder. The man smiled creepily and told the nurse that being rude to patients with her sharp mouth would lead her to the director's office. She did not talk and turned around. The last thing she said to Ju Yun was to remind her to pay her medical fees as soon as possible. Ju Yun looked at the man confusingly and asked who he was. The man smiled, showing his business card, and said he was her big brother's friend. When Zhu Yi paid the bills, he went straight to his sister's room, asking if she knew why the bill had increased. He was surprised when he lifted his gaze and saw two unfamiliar men. The man got up and greeted him. He introduced himself as Zhao Wenbing, the mayor's secretary. He frowned his brows and wondered why someone like him came there. He shook his hands and told Zhao Wen that a patient's room was unsuitable for a conversation. The two left, and Zhao Wen told his men to keep playing with the girl, and it looked like Zhu Yun and the man were enjoying themselves. They went into a cafe, and everyone there talked about the student with a hidden class. Zhu Yi's photos and name were leaked, and they were talking about him. He congratulated Zhu Yi for receiving the sacred angel protection and awakening the Saint Knight class. He placed a box on the table and said this key was for a vault in the city with resources inside for his cultivation, given by the mayor. He thought there might be a catch on this because the mayor wouldn't give such things generously. The man added that the mayor called for a professional medical team and a level 36 second grade priest to serve his sister. Jui closed the box and said he appreciated the offer. Their conversation was done, so he returned to her sister to explain what happened. Ju Yun's eyes glimmered, and she said her brother would rise to the top now. He bumped her head and told her to focus on her recovery instead. He suddenly remembered his slow recovery skill and wondered if he could try it on his sister. He placed his hand on her head and activated it. Ju Yun's body was covered with immense magic energy, making her feel like she was in a hot spring and receiving a full body massage from wisps. Ju Yi asked his sister how she was feeling, and she was surprised to feel no aching in her body anymore. He smiled softly and thought he may not be able to heal her disease, but he could reduce the pain at least. The following day, he went to the school and the school's second headmaster, Luo Hang, said four teachers from the top ten universities came there to meet him for something important. Jui asked which universities came to their school, and when he said the universities, the top three universities weren't among them. Luo Hang said the top three universities always recruit according to the exam results. Once they got to the room, they could already hear the people inside the room saying they would spend everything on a genius like Jui. The headmaster opened the room and greeted the four representatives of their own academy. The guy in the front was Tian Fu, the eyeglasses man was Lai Bing, the woman was Zhu Yu, and lastly, Mr. Yu Yuan. Zhu Yi greeted everyone with a bow. Tian Fu squinted his eyes and thought the kid was still humble and steady despite awakening the hidden class. The other teachers thought the same, but they were suddenly shocked when Tian Fu spoke, saying he would cut to the chase and said if Zhu Yi enrolled at Rongyang University. He would get 2 million yuan and 3 Saint Knight class exclusive skill books. Judy was shocked and thought even the mayor couldn't give him these skill books. Lai Bing from Chu and Nan University scoffed and said they would offer Judy 3 million yuan on admission, 3 Saint Knight skill books a year, and classes instructed by a level 56 tertiary knight. Zhu Yu chuckled and said they weren't being sincere enough. She said Cheng University would only give him 2 million but would give him a B-class cultivation resource upon his admission. Luo Heng dropped his jaw and whispered to Zhu Yi that money can't measure the B-class cultivation. Zhu Yu called Zhu Yi and asked which university he would choose, but everyone was surprised when he rejected their offer. The headmaster tried to calm everyone. Zhu Yi bravely said he would be entering one of the top three universities, Su Kang, King Jing, and Modu University. These three universities are not only humans but also elves, giants, and other races that are naturally stronger than humans. Entering these universities would be as hard as climbing the heavens. Tian Fu suddenly burst laughing, saying Zhu Yi was an ambitious, ignorant brat. His immense aura was activated as he said that he had read his profile, lost too much in his life, and lacked the resources to fill it up. Zhu Yi could feel the force from Tian Fu, and if his previous him were there, he would eventually lose consciousness. The headmaster acted quickly and asked if he was trying to bully his student on his grounds. Their powerful auras collided mid-air, but Zhu Yu noticed the student panting for air. She was surprised to see him withstanding Tian Fu's aura for over three breaths. Tian Fu scoffed and said student recruitment does not only look for potential but also attitude. The three of them headed out as they thought Zhu Yi had such high ambitions and would become nothing. 
The headmaster tried to stop them, but they ignored him. Zhu Yu said Tiang Fu's words still rang true even if he braced. Zhu smirked and said he would prove his strength with the exam result. He was confident that he would increase his strength with the help of his system within a month and enter one of the top three universities. Zhu Yu thought it had been a long time since she had seen such ambitious and resolute eyes. She smiled and said she would look forward to his exam result before leaving. A month had passed, and everyone had gathered inside the arena to witness the examination. The students who would undergo the exam were getting anxious about it, but some talked about Zhu Yi, who arrogantly rejected the special admissions. They looked behind when they heard Zhu Yi had arrived. He was walking to the front with an intense aura surrounding his body. The students around him could feel that he had changed from the last time they saw him. He was giving off his chilling aura, even doing nothing. The gigantic portal activated, making the examinees buzz in anxiousness. The students said cat monsters inside this portal were extraordinarily agile, and the minotaur's skin was thick, making them wonder if the academy planned to execute them all. The fifth class teacher, Lai Zhang Yong, told them to act according to their ability, and that they were advised to use their return scroll if they encountered any lethal threats in the secret realm because losing their life in this realm would also cost their life in the real world. Once the time was up, the teacher told them to get ready. Magic circles appeared above the students simultaneously, and they all disappeared instantly before their teachers. When they got inside the realm, the screens in the arena flashed some views of where they were and what the students were doing. Some went to a party, and some went solo, like Zhu Yi. The audience thought it was wise for the elite classes to go solo because they could have all the experience and get a higher mark on the exam. But the risk of death also increased. Their eyes were drawn to Zhu Yi when he was about to challenge the nightmare level in solo. The director of education, Jan Tao, gasped in shock. He asked the headmaster why the Saint Knight chose to fight the nightmare difficulty with a 40% death rate alone. He added that the mayor of Lai Jiang City poured efforts to help him get a good result, and losing Zhu Yi's life in the exam would tarnish the mayor's reputation. The headmaster chuckled awkwardly and told him not to worry because Zhu Yi may have his own trump card. The glaring eyes pierced through the darkness, and when a monster suddenly dashed behind Zhu Yi, he immediately pulled his weapon out of his inventory, and when he got the axe, the monster was right before him. Zhu Yi smashed his single-bladed axe straight into the monster, which instantly crushed the monster. He had trained for a month and reached level 10, but his average stat points reached 47, equivalent to level 13. He noticed the monsters were not attacking him, so he decided to move. He dashed towards them, activating his weapon blessing to increase his attack power and accuracy. The axe blade got covered with his light aura, and when it touched the monster's skin, it glided smoothly like butter. His Saint Knight weapon got a blessing from the Sacred Angel, thus increasing its strength. The other examinees might be jealous because this realm limits one's weapon to below 3-star bronze, and Zhuyi's axe was a 5-star. When a group of monsters attacked, he concentrated his power on his palm and released the level 5 blade of pure light, paralyzing the monsters. He grabbed the wrist of a monster and threw it in their direction. The last monster standing got caught and smashed into a wall. The audience in the arena cheered Zhu Yi as he looked like he was only playing with the monsters. Tiang Tianjun said Zhu Yi was faster than the monster. He added that Zhu Yi releases magic rapidly and very precisely. He gritted his teeth and cursed Lai Zhang Yong for having a good seed placed into his class. The education director commented that Zhu Yi's mindset may be strong, but his methods were unwise because he wasted his stamina on the first wave. Zhu Yi was now facing the second wave of the cat monsters, and they thought swinging the axe's weight consecutively would tear his arm and lose from the monsters. The cat monsters roared and launched together in his direction, leaving Zhu Yi with no rest. The audience was so tense, wondering if he could survive another wave, but he exceeded their expectations and released a powerful blow. He took a leap back and shot his magic power in the monster's direction, causing their bodies to explode to pieces. The Saint Knight Axe swung and rotated in the air, going towards his direction. He caught it with his hand and immediately crushed the skull of a monster before him. Once he defeated the last monster, a glowing blue circle appeared right before him. The circle grew bigger and became a portal to the next level. Zhu Yi entered the portal with his axe on his shoulder. The moment he got inside, a massive group of cat monsters greeted him with a growl. In the arena, a live streamer named KK welcomed everyone on his stream. 
he told them the second academy's popular student with an S-grade talent and a Saint Knight had completed the first wave within 3 minutes and 17 seconds. He grabbed the camera and said it was 29 seconds faster than last year's top ranker. The cameraman rolled his eyes and told him not to touch the lens. Zhang Feifei giggled and teased her teacher that he was surprisingly smiling plenty, but he told her to watch the exam instead of him. He grabbed his cheeks and wondered if his smiles were so obvious. Going back to Zhui, he used his evaluation technique to view the monster's stats, and there, he saw the minotaur behind these cat monsters. He commended them for having such a great team of trained soldiers, but he knew the risks had increased by a hundredfold. When the minotaur roared, the cat monsters growled as well. They all charged forward, with the minotaur leading them all. The mages of their team summoned their fireballs, and Zhui immediately felt a hand crawling up to him. The audience gasped as they realized the cat monsters cursed Yui. The warriors rushed forward, mages applying buffs on them, and the healers dishing effects. He smirked as he looked at their team, but the audience held their breaths at the intensity of the situation. When the monsters were a few inches away from him, he held his hands facing together and activated the cross of the sacred light. His eyes and body were glowing with blazing fire. A huge blinding cross emerged from his back, which caused continuous fire damage to every enemy within his range. The cat monsters were instantly burned, and the education director, Jan Tao, said that was a grade B skill that was difficult to obtain. Lai Xiang frowned his brows and wondered how Zhui got a grade B skill when the mayor could only provide him with a grade C skill at best. The minotaur was left there standing, so he pointed his axe at him and challenged it to come to him. The Minotaur activated its Berserk, superior body skill and stomped his foot on the ground. The impact caused a huge crack that grew bigger towards Zhui, so he jumped to evade it. The monster roared and rushed like an angry bull that no attack could interrupt, so Zhui went above it and released an air slash. The powerful attack landed perfectly on the target, and he immediately followed up with another attack using the Blade of Pure Light. The Minotaur froze after the skill had taken effect. Zhui lifted his axe, even knowing the Minotaur had thick skin like your face. Just kidding. He slashed the blade of the axe through its skin. The blade was deep and sliced through its guts. Zhui noticed the monster was still moving, so he lifted his leg and stepped on its mouth. He knocked down a 4 meter tall Minotaur easily, so he should now enter the boss room. The crowd went wild and cheered for Zhui, while KK, the streamer, told his viewers that Zhui took 59 seconds in this round. The education director clapped his hands as he couldn't believe a student who had awakened a month ago could be this incredible. He congratulated the headmaster of the Second Academy, but he replied that fortune comes and goes. He hoped that Zhui could bring Second Academy to a whole new height after this. They were surprised when they noticed Zhui entering the boss's room without resting. Jan Tao gasped and said it would be a huge loss if he got defeated due to lack of rest, so the headmaster tried to calm him down. To be able to enter the top 100, they would choose students who went solo in a nightmare difficulty and who passed within the shortest time. Zhui stepped inside the castle and was greeted by a low voice. The Minotaur King, who was a level 16, growled and cursed the human for daring to step into his palace. The monster swung its weapon and smashed it at him. Zhui activated the Blessing of Dawn, the Gift of Courage, the Gift of God, and the Gift of Protection all at once. The angry cow frowned after realizing he did not land a hit. Zhui called him an ugly cow in his Saint Knight initial form. The Minotaur King gritted its teeth and charged towards him. Zhui dashed forward and leaped above the monster in a swift motion. As soon as the blade landed on the monster's palm, he was surprised that his axe with four buffs couldn't pierce its thick skin. He grunted and pushed a little harder, which created a wound. The Minotaur King felt the burning sensation. It roared in pain, so swung its weapon for its counterattack. Zhui immediately moved away from its trajectory, so the weapon landed on the floor. The impact caused some smoke to cover his vision, but the Minotaur's eyes suddenly beamed behind the smoke and landed its hammer on his body. Zhui was thrown and crashed from pillar to pillar, but luckily, he had armor to protect his body. Otherwise, his bones would be shattered. He took a deep breath and summoned the Spear of Victory with a grade C that could cause great damage to the enemy. Glowing magic portals appeared, and blades emerged from it. The spear suddenly dashed forward toward the monster at the speed of light, but it was deflected. It would be impossible to overpower the monster with strength, and most people would try to wear the monster down but it would take away his chance of taking the first place. Zhui noticed the monster's agility was lower than his, so he planned to attack it rapidly from multiple angles to put it in a tough spot. A spear managed to pierce through his defense, but Zhui's mana was getting low. 
he also noticed that the Minotaur King had another weakness, which was resistance. He landed a blow with his fist, and he knew he had to release multiple high damage skills in a short period. Jui found an excellent opportunity to send another set of spears. The spears dashed towards the monster and exploded as it landed on the monster. Another warning appeared because his mana was very low. He had to finish this quickly before running out of mana. He pulled another weapon and did not plan to make such a large move but had no choice. He swung his sword across the Minotaur's body, and it successfully pierced through. Jui had successfully defeated the Minotaur King and was graded as SSS. He got first place in clearing the map, which shocked Jui. He was so happy that he giggled and tipped his toe like a child. The day Jui got transmigrated to this body, his mother passed away, and he got overwhelmed by the debts and medical fees of his sister. It was pressing him down, but never in his life, he chose to give up. The system's appearance gave him a second chance in life, so he must work harder. His stats may change, but his heart was the same, it was unshakable. When he returned to his form, he walked to the portal to return to the arena. While traveling to the real world, he gained experience and skill points, which increased his level. He also received a forest belt and a forest ring that would give him buffs if he was inside a forest. He had also received two more items, and when he got back to the arena, the crowd was chanting his name like he won the Olympics. He was surprised everyone was calling him a god. He turned around when he heard some cameras clicking, and there he saw the headmaster and the director of education smiling at him. They congratulated him and praised Chewie, but it was interrupted when a car suddenly came in with its roaring engine. It was worth a house in the capital and was owned by the education director. He said they would inform them of the result in three days minimum. After the examination, he went to the hospital, and the mayor's secretary, Zhao Wenbing, fulfilled his promise and placed his sister in a deluxe room with a professional medical team. A nurse greeted him when he got inside the elevator. He pressed the 26th floor button, but a cold breeze came in when the door closed, making the nurse shiver. When Zhuyi heard the nurse complaining about the temperature, he noticed the icy breeze from the vent. When they arrived at the 26th floor, they were shocked to see the state of the place. The walls, floors, and the people were covered in ice. His eyes widened when he remembered Sai Oh Yun, so he immediately ran, leaving the nurse alone. In an instant, the nurse froze, covered with thick ice. Zhuyi smashed the wall to Zhu Yun's room, and he was shocked to see a ginormous ice dragon above his sister. Someone beside the bed was casting a magic spell that may be the cause of this cold, icy place. The ice dragon swirled in the air as it roared. Zhuyi raised his guard, but the woman casting the magic circle told him not to attack the dragon, so he withdrew the magic orb from his palm and watched the creature. He walked closer to Sis King to ask what was happening. She said his sister's heart might shatter if they carelessly attacked the dragon. She added that Zhao Yun's cold disease ignited, and everyone on the floor froze into ice. Sis King could only suppress the cold from leaving the floor, so she told him to run now. Zhuyi got worried as Sis King told him she could only do this much without a high-level priest. Zhuyi stared at the dragon for seconds and decided to activate his system. He walked closer to his sister and used all his skill points to upgrade his slow recovery. The skill was upgraded, and he immediately used his enhanced slow regeneration at Zhu Yun. Sis King was shocked when her magic circle shattered because Zhu Yi's skill overpowered her skill. A magic circle appeared on his palms, radiating a warm light. He told her to inform the mayor's secretary and ask him to invite a high-level priest. But Sis King told him the high-level priest's schedule was packed and that the priest wouldn't make it on time. Zhu Yi looked at her and told her she should tell the secretary that he would do him a favor in the future if he could call a high-level priest right now. Sis King immediately ran to go to the mayor's secretary while Zhu Yi warmed Zhu Yun up. He didn't know her cold disease was severe enough to affect the outside world, so he poured his power into helping his sister as he knew she had been suffering every day and every night with this disease. Zhu Yi was looking so exhausted, and some parts of his body were covered in ice. The dragon was near to devouring his whole body in ice, but he kept pushing himself for Zhu Yun. Out of nowhere, a green ball came dashing towards the dragon. The dragon growled when the ball hit its face, and it bounced from the walls at the speed of light. Zhu Yun was panting for air, looking extremely exhausted. Zhu Yi could not move his neck to look at the person who shot the ball, so he shouted not to touch his sister, but the ball crashed into him and threw him off the floor. A woman with a staff smirked at the dragon and challenged it. The dragon immediately charged towards her, so she swung her staff back and smashed the dragon with all her power. The magic power from her swirled in some character's form. She deployed the chain and caught the dragon with it. Once the dragon is immobilized, her eyes glow. She smashed her staff on the magic circle she summoned to suppress the dragon back. 
The moment the dragon disappeared, Zhu Yi walked back to check on his sister. The priest hit the floor with the tip of his staff, and her power radiated like a wave of warm light. Those who got frozen by the dragon were warmed, and the ice on the walls and floor melted. The priest introduced herself as Chui Lai Na, a level 35 priest of King Yun City. He greeted her, but Chui Lai Na was amazed at how he managed to hold out for long. She already knew Zhui because the education director had told her about him. He asked if his sister could be cured, but he was shocked when Chui Lai Na said she was undergoing the bloodline awakening based on the signs and symptoms. When the eternal game emerged into the real world, the players in the world chose their characters to be elves, giants, demons, and other races. Those players married some humans after two centuries, and when their pure blood was diluted with human blood, they lost their traits and power. They could revive those traits and power through a bloodline awakening. When that person successfully awakened, they could control the power of other races. Their level and learning ability would also multiply. But if they failed, they would either be paralyzed or perish on the spot. Chui Lai Na said his sister was suffering because she couldn't handle the power of the bloodline, which was a rare freezing bloodline. She added that changing her constitution with the freezing lotus would help her carry this bloodline. But it was very rare, and the last time it appeared at an auction was 30 years ago. Chui Lai Na opened a portal and told him that the dragon would completely explode three months later if she couldn't suppress it in time. Another method she mentions was to seal it, but she wouldn't level up in the future. After five days, Chui had been training endlessly. He had been choosing stat points for his daily reward and distributing them across four stats to keep everything balanced. When a notification popped up, he was surprised to receive notice of his new skills, items, and points from topping the exam. The news had been taken about the black horse from Jianglai City. They said Zhu Yi was only at level 10 when he entered the exam. His name was on the headline news. The education director, Jan Tao, told the reporters that he was the one who advised the government to increase their investment in the students. Some group of students in a cafe couldn't believe a saint knight in level 10 had aced the examination. A student showed a recording while Zhu Yi was in the examination realm and was shocked to see he could use multiple buffs at once. A red-haired guy was also watching the recording on his flat screen from a mansion near that area. He realized Zhu Yi was 20 seconds faster in clearing the exam than him. He grinned and thought this kid from Second Academy dared to take away his honor and courting his end. In a park nearby, Zhu Yi's phone suddenly buzzed. He took his phone and noticed a message saying his bank account had received 7 million cash, so he immediately called Secretary Zhao to ask. He was told that it was a reward from the government and that he would also receive a luxurious mansion. Secretary Zhao asked about his preference for the house, but he told him to pick one for him. The secretary added that the top three universities were on their way to him to recruit him, but a teacher from Rongyang University was already before him. A voice butted in. A man on a ladder connected to the helicopter asked the Ro Yang teacher why they were recruiting Zhu Yi after one of their teachers called the student arrogant for aiming to get recruited by the top three. Ro Yang's teacher said they would give Zhu Yi 4 million cash if he enrolled in their school. The man from the ladder jumped off. He was from Modi University, one of the top three universities, and he said they would double their offer. He was telling him to give up, but a soft voice from a purple-headed woman interrupted them. She hugged Zhu Yi and flew to the sky with her wings. She said King Jing University had only cultivation resources, but he would receive grade a cultivation resources yearly. They suddenly bumped into a magic circle behind them. A woman in black said Su Kang University could also provide him with resources and everything but told the purple-headed woman to put the student down. The teacher from Modu agreed and said their university would provide him with grade a cultivation resources yearly and a full set of golden grade equipment yearly as well. The teacher from King Jing put him down and said she was only trying to have a private conversation with Zhu Yi. The woman from Su Kang introduced himself as Su Mayer. She added that her university practices strength as absolute. They could give him grade S resources, and they repeatedly won first place in the freshman exchange contest. The purple-haired woman blew air from her nose and told Su Mayer not to get boastful, but Su Mei told her that they could not refute the fact that their school won. All the offers could grant Zhu Yi a bright future, but if he wanted to get even stronger, he had to pick the university that suited him. When he had declared that he would choose Su Kang University, Su Mayer smiled. She pulled the scroll, which was the special recruitment contract for Zhu Yi to sign. The two teachers sighed in defeat and told Zhu Yi to come to their university if he found Su Kang incompetent. Su Mayer glared at them and called them stubborn mother-father. Zhu Yi hasn't signed the contract yet and asked why she was at that level. She said she was a level 42 mage 
but he commented that she didn't look like she was in her 30s. She said he would meet more young and powerful people in their school, so he excitedly signed the contract. A magic circle emerged from the contract, indicating that the contract was sealed. Su Mayer told him to prepare his things now as she would take him a week later. Zhu Yi was surprised that their university started early, but they did this to cultivate freshmen to the highest degree and improve their performance in the contest. The following day, Zhu Yun was transferred to a different place. The house was so big and sparkling, she couldn't believe they would be living in this mansion now. Secretary Zhao said the mansion had three floors. The second floor was exclusively for his training, and the third floor had a large balcony and leisure area. When the secretary was about to leave, Zhu Yi said he would like to request something. He said that Zhu Yun was still weak, even though Sis King would stay beside her. He hoped that Secretary Zhao could look after her in his stead for some time. When Su Mayer arrived, Zhu Yi reminded his sister to listen to the priestess, call him if she had problems, take her meds on time, and many more. She sighed and covered her ears, but her brother pinched her cheeks in annoyance. She gave up and told him she heard everything. He couldn't get his eyes away from his sister when he got inside the car. Su Mayer asked if this was his first time traveling. He said yes but got confused when she told him to be prepared. In an instant, his soul almost left his body when the car moved at lightning speed and jumped into the portal. Multiple portals appeared in the sky, and vehicles came out of them. Su Mayer's car emerged from the portal and landed on the platform. Zhui asked why they used teleportation magic and if they were short in time. Su Mayer told him it was convenient, and they worked with the military to build this teleportation array near their school. When Zhui got out of the car, he was speechless when he roamed his eyes around. The buildings were perfectly built in the mountains, and the entrance was so huge that you could fit a titan there. Different races were there to study, and he was so excited. She told him they should head in now, but out of nowhere, something came dashing on his right. Or should I say, someone. A silver-haired woman with long silvered hair was the one who kicked the guy and told him she didn't want to talk to him. She walked away, leaving everyone speechless. The students laughed at Jen as he finally got what he deserved for picking up on juniors. Zhui figured that the woman had a demonic bloodline. Su Mayer told him not to be surprised as he would meet more different bloodlines soon. He said he wouldn't be hostile towards them and begrudge the entire demon race just because of his father's death. She smiled and gave him his student ID, and he noticed the ranking score on it. She explained that the freshmen were ranked yearly based on their exam results, but only temporarily. There will be a freshman competition next month to rearrange their rankings accordingly. She looked at him and reminded him he would be everyone's target as they would be going after his position. Despite knowing that, Zhui seemed to have gotten more excited and said he didn't plan to give his position to anyone. They continued walking while Su Mayer talked about the system score. The freshmen would be given scores according to their ranking as they would use it to buy meals, equipment, potions, and many more. The students at Su Kang University could obtain scores on completing missions on the board or get scores according to their ranking. She reminded him not to be arrogant because 5,000 students would fight for the top. They went to a huge gate leading to the Goblin Dungeon, which had an entry level range from 17 to 21. The Distorted Forest would require levels 23 to 26, and the Purgatory has an entry level range from 28 to 31. Besides levels, the students also need to meet a specific score to enter that realm, and they could practice in the training room. Their opponents here could be either robots or actual people. He looked around and smiled, glad he had chosen a competitive school for him to enter. A group of students greeted the teacher, so Su Mayer said hi to them. The students wondered why teacher Su Mayer was leading that student personally when seniors led them in groups of ten. The senior with them was Wang Lai. He told them that special recruitment students had assigned teachers to tour and assist them around. They were shocked after realizing that Guy earlier was their term's first place. They asked about Zhu Yi, so Wang Lai told them his name and that he was a level 13 Saint Knight. They all gasped in shock and said a Saint Knight was only a support class, wondering how Zhu Yi surpassed the combat classes in the exam. A guy with red hair noticed that the woman who did a flying kick earlier seemed interested in Zhu Yi. He gritted his teeth and exclaimed that the first place was a fake. Zhu Yi turned his head in his direction. This guy was Louis Jing, a level 13 punishment knight, and he bravely asked Zhu to a duel. One of the seniors grabbed his shoulder to stop him, but Louis Jing told him not to worry about him. The senior wanted to curse the first year student for absent mindedly challenging the rank one. They thought Liu Jing would try to step on a saint knight as his stepping stone. Zhu Yi crossed his arms and asked why he should accept his challenge. Liu Yi Jing said he would give him 100 points if the rank one wins, and if he loses, Zhu Yi doesn't have to give him anything. 
he smirked and thought he should set an example to them, and told him he would fight him with 300 points. Lui Jing's body shook in shock. He only has 400 points by ranking 38, so he could lose so much if he fails. He looked at the silver-haired woman and noticed she was looking at Yi. He clicked a sound from his tongue. Yi got impatient and said he would leave then. But Lui Jing impulsively accepted his request for 300 points. He said they wouldn't need a ring and that he would lose if Lui Jing didn't fall to his knees in three moves. Su Mayer led the two to a ring for a formal duel, and she started the countdown. Lui Jing took the first move. The Punishment Knight was similar to a Saint Knight class, but the Punishment Knight excelled in dealing with damages, while the Saint Knight excelled in support. He gazed at her for the last time and thought defeating Zhu Yi would bring him to the spotlight. He jumped and released a blood slash in the rank 1's direction, but Zhu Yi easily dodged it and landed a kick on Lui Jing's side. He was sent flying off the ring and crashed into a wall. The impact was so strong that it shattered the insides of Lui Jing's body. Zhu Yi sighed and got his hopes up for a good fight. The senior approached him to check on him, and he reported back to the teacher, saying Lui Jing had broken five ribs and had internal bleeding. Su Mayer handed Zhu Yi the 300 points to him while the students buzzed, wondering how Zhu Yi managed to land a kick from an unblockable blood slash. They all went silent when the silver-haired woman called him. She walked closer and politely asked to have a match with him. Zhu Yi got a closer look and noticed that she possessed a legendary weapon, so it wouldn't be bad to test its power. He agreed to take her challenge. The two went to the stage for the duel. Zhu Yi summoned his mystic light warhammer. The crowd was getting bigger and Lai Dong Sheng, one of the Aurora Club captains and a level 29 spearman, also arrived. Once the duel had begun, the woman rushed at him at lightning speed with her shadow slash, while Zhu Yi used his typhoon smash for his counterattack. When their weapons collided, a massive explosion occurred. Their auras were colliding mid-air, and their powerful strengths were monstrous. She lifted her sword and activated her demonic slash. Zhu Yi smirked and launched at her, smiling because he had finally found someone who could fight him head-on. She immediately swung her sword to block his warwicks. They used some skills in this attack and quarreled like cats in mid-air. The difference in their auras was so bright. The people watching their duel were speechless. They couldn't believe these two were first-year students. Lai Dong Sheng commented that if the woman didn't have a trump card, she would lose, but in the eyes of the others, they may look equally matched. He added that using a heavy weapon like hers could easily drain stamina, so she had to avoid constant large swings. Heavy weapon users like her immediately hit hard when they saw an opening. But Zhu Yi wasn't lowering his guard down and kept attacking her to keep her busy. Lai Dong Sheng chuckled and said the Saint Knight was hot-tempered for fighting without holding back. The woman was pushed back, looking exhausted. But Zhu Yi was only warming up. He activated the gift of God, courage, and other skills. The magic power within him surged out of his body. The woman could feel the intimidating pressure from his true strength. Zhu Yi lifted his hand and summoned the Spear of Victory, so she immediately jumped to the side when the spear charged towards her. He smirked as he expected she would do that. The spears he prepared caught her off guard, and he was about to smash her with his axe, but he dropped his weapon. She opened her eyes and looked at him. Zhu Yi asked if she wanted to continue, but she said no, knowing he was far stronger than her. Zhu Yi asked why she didn't go all out, but she smiled because she was caught. She said she didn't want to use her trump card in a spar. She added that he also did not go all out, so she asked him to add her for another spar. I guess he gained no score points, but he scored a girl instead. When she got his details, she smiled while blushing on her phone. They walked out of the room and showed him where the dormitory was. Even the dormitory has rankings, and as the special recruit student, he would be living at the top of the mountain. She walked him to the front door of his dormitory. He looked at his card before opening the gate, but he froze when Su Mei suddenly said she heard he was looking for the freezing lotus. She told him that a party from six years ago had seen it at a Tempest Mountain range guarded by high-level monsters, but she couldn't guarantee its accuracy. He went inside to research more information. That mountain she mentioned appeared after the Eternal game merged with the real world. It has various treasures, exotic flora and fauna, not even tertiary classes dared to enter it leisurely. With Zhu Yi's current strength, he could only run if he faced a high-level monster, but he remembered the resurrection item he received after the exam. He had decided to go there after buying some skills and equipment. He clicked and bought some immunity to physical damage, some long-range skills, and more. He was going on a shopping spree as everything on the screen was free, but he still needed to spend points to collect the forest belt and ring the exam that rewarded him. The night came, and he went to the Tempest Mountain Range with the forest cloak he bought and the rest of the set. An explosion occurred near him, so he went there to check it. 
The silvered-haired woman was anxiously looking at her phone in her bed. Jiang Chu Ran pressed her face on her pillow as she was getting flustered by their conversation. When her phone buzzed, she immediately rolled back and answered it. She told the green-haired woman that she met a special boy. The woman asked why she kept sighing, and Jiang Chu Ran told her how she challenged the guy and used all her charm when fighting, but she wondered why he wasn't falling for her. She suddenly remembered Yi telling her he was at the Tempest Mountain Range, so she excitedly said she would follow him. A truck was rolling down the forest and crashed into a group of monsters. They growled at the girl named Zhu Zio. She threw some discs on the floor. It rolled under the monsters and instantly exploded simultaneously. A monster managed to escape the bomb. So the summoner, Wen Tian Run, called the spirit Iceness and blasted the monster. Another monster dashed its way towards them. So a woman with a huge gun named Zhu Dan blasted the monster with raining bullets. She defeated that one and redirected her gun toward the other monsters in the back. Zhu Dan called someone from the shadow of the forest, and a lightning speed sword slashed the monster into multiple slices in a second. Zhu Zio, the mechanic, chuckled, claiming their victory, but luckily, Wen Tian Run noticed the incoming attack and blocked it. The impact exploded, and their truck was pushed over from its power. The trail of that attack also left a huge amount of damage to the truck. They were grunting in pain and felt dizzy. They immediately tried to get up. The swordswoman, Su King Lion, asked if they were all right, but suddenly, Wen Tian screamed and saw the highly violent demons behind them. They had already used all their trump cards, so they all froze, watching the demons attack them hopelessly. Out of nowhere, Juyi appeared riding a pearl white wolf, dashed towards them, and used the sacred storm skill to block the flames. A glowing cross struck the ground, surrounding the demons. The fire swirled around them, creating a tornado. The monsters inside the tornado suddenly felt difficulty breathing. They were gasping for air while Juyi chanted his magic powers at them. The fire tornado got stronger, and a massive glowing sword emerged from the sky and pierced the demons. Once they perished and turned into dust, he patted his wolf, commanding it to put out the fires crawling in the woods. The four watched him and were speechless as he finished the group of demons. Some parts of the forest were destroyed, but he focused on the two injured women. He used his slow regeneration on them. After that, Su King Lion thanked him and replied that he recognized them immediately as they were one of the top three teams in their academy, the Blue Phoenix. She chuckled shyly and told him they should head back to the base to resupply together. You may wonder if we skipped a few chapters, but a month passed. Juyi had been exploring the mountain for almost a month and still had not yet found the frozen lotus. She looked at their mechanic after Juyi agreed. Zhu Zio closed her eyes and concentrated on her magic power. Two little round robots appeared beside her, and the magic circle spat magic mana around her. After a few seconds, a spider mech crawled out of the magic circle, and the sight of this excited Juyi's and the wolf's inner child. Zhu Zio told them to hop on, and when they settled, they marched forward. Sea King Lion asked him if he encountered demons normally in the mountain range. She added that this was the first time they encountered demons while exploring the outer area. Juyi figured that those demons might have come from the mountain ranges or that there was a dimensional crack nearby that released the demons. He asked about the Mage Tower, and she said the Mage Tower in the base was protected by the army and that it monitored the monsters' movements in the mountains to prevent them from attacking the cities. The tower could only monitor the epic and legendary level monsters. She added that those monsters lower than that couldn't be detected. But she wondered why the monster sends low-level monsters in the dimensional crack. Zhuyi thought that if those higher-level monsters traveled through the crack, the tower would see their movements, and the military would immediately make their way to them. She sighed and shoved the idea off, saying she should just report to the base for now. From a distance, a pack of hungry demons roared and attacked every living thing they saw. Juyi's group saw the immense mana from there and knew that this presence was from demons. He told them he would go there because the demons were attacking someone. He hopped on the wolf and dashed forward, ignoring their warnings. He put on his serious face as he felt the familiar purple aura. He wondered why it was there. Meanwhile, a group of people hiding in a bush discussed if they should help the woman who was surrounded by almost 20 platinum demons, but they were trapped. They wanted to help, but their skills weren't enough to par with the demons. The demons surrounded the woman with silver hair. She charged forward, slashing her sword left to right at the speed of light. She was frustrated as she noticed that the demons figured that she had a time limit to her skills, and they were surrounding her to deplete her strength. The demons moved in groups of ten, scattered across the plain, so it was an endless battle for her. She would become history if she couldn't break through before her power of succubus disappeared. Right on time, Juyi cast the Thunderfall skill. Lightning struck them all at once, burning their flesh and bones to ashes. They all screeched in pain and disappeared into the air. 
The woman was left speechless after seeing who saved her life. He was dashing towards her and suddenly held his hand up. He told Giant Churan, the silver-haired woman, to move away because the monster in her direction was about to attack. She groaned after hearing the deafening roar of the huge demon. The magic mana surrounding the demons changed. They had gone berserk in their body of fire. They growled and roared loudly as they ran towards them. Giant Chu ran screamed and told him the demons had gone berserk. She told him to run, thinking Zhui couldn't fight them after their powers doubled. She thought of risking the 90% rate of exterminating all of them if she self-destructs to save Zhui, but he did not listen. He jumped at her to save her from the monster's fist. Midair, he cast the punishment of light in their direction, and banging thunders struck them to their spine in a blink of an eye. He gazed back at the monster and saw them charging in their direction. In only a few seconds, they were surrounded by 180 demons. They made too much noise that attracted the demons to gather there. He placed his fingers on her forehead and told her to run to the left to attract some demons. He reminded her not to get focused on engaging in combat before putting buffs on her. She felt so light and stronger. She couldn't believe the immense effect of the buffs on her. Zhuyi immediately dashed with his weapon while the monsters opened their mouths to activate their powers. But it was too late because he had already swung his hammer. With the force and strength of that attack, the impact caused a massive explosion. Giant Chu Ran was still in shock, as she couldn't believe Zhuyi could use such buffs that a level 25 Saint Knight couldn't do. When a demon landed before her, the white wolf launched at it and bit it. She pulled her sword out and slashed the demons coming to her while Zhui dealt with the demons after him. When a blade was a few inches away from him, a concentrated demonic miasma shadow whip deflected it away. He noticed giant Chu Ran was already doing her part. It was the best time to execute his plan now that the demons were attracted to the holy light. He called giant Chu Ran and told her to stay put as a protection of the holy light that covered them. A holy cross emerged from Zhui's palm. His body was overflowing with his magic aura after he summoned the holy light, forming a sacred cross behind him that caused fire damage to all enemies within its range. The monsters were screeching, screaming, and everything, as their flesh was burnt from the sacred light. Giant Chu Ran dropped her jaw in amazement. His eyes gleamed when the holy cross faded, ordering the holy light to vanquish all the darkness. His magic energy elevated as he cast the sacred storm. In an instant, a huge cross appeared in the sky and pierced on the ground, enclosing them. The holy light from the cross formed a tornado, and its force caught the demons in the air. The tornado moved around and swirled until those monsters got fried and chopped with the sharp wind. The group of adventurers from behind the bushes were speechless. Almost all of them were level 26, and they couldn't even fight 10 demons together. Their leader told them they should announce they would befriend such a strong young man. But the dashing spider match came. Zhu Dan hopped off first, greeting Zhu Yi. The four were dumbfounded after they saw the state of the area. After defeating those demons, Zhuo Yi leveled up to 18 and gained some stat and skill points. He opened a vial of potion to replenish his strength. He thought of asking the teachers about how he felt like his skills were not still enough despite having high mana. Su King Lion asked if he did all this, while Zhu Dan blurted out that his strength was a little out of her imagination. Zhuyi suddenly noticed that Giant Chu Ran had dropped to the floor, exhausted from her strength, as she had used too much power. Su King Lion asked if they encountered strong demons, and he said they only fought with some level 23 gold demons. Hearing him talk casually like he only killed a cockroach made her think that the general of these demons might be somewhere, and that it would be unsafe if they stayed for too long. They all agreed to head back to the base to resupply. The adventurers nearby noticed them leaving, so when they were about to get out, they froze after sensing a demonic aura that felt heavy. Colors from his face almost left after seeing the white demon flying in the air. The legendary demon's spawn was a level 30 and a flying gold fire dragon at level 24. After their appearance, their abnormal movement alarmed the people on the base. The sudden movement of the two demons alarmed the army and ordered their troops to enter combat preparation. The Snow Dragon Knight squad immediately ran to the teleportation square while the priest squad prepared for rescue and was ordered to keep their mana full. The mage squad located the demons to construct a large-scale teleportation formation. Once they were all set, they waited for the Snow Dragon Corps Major, Zhu Yu Zhu, to give his order. A slashing light came and swung around. It landed perfectly on Zhu Yu Zhu's hand, and he told his men that they would be the ones who would protect their land before moving out. In the deep part of the mountain, a demon was sitting on his throne as he gathered everyone. They had lost dozens of his kind in his half year on earth. They would be returning to their original realm after half a day, so he allowed all the demons to go wild before leaving the earth. The demons were cheering and screaming joyfully, so they marched and sent chaos around the mountain. 
The demon on the dragon said he would take their souls and burn them with hellfire. A dark, eerie aura appeared on the ground as the hands of the demons emerged from it. In a few seconds, they were surprised to see the legendary, platinum, and gold demons being summoned to the surface. Su King Lion told Zhu Yi that they would hold them off and that he should escape immediately. The four were determined to keep Zhu Yi alive as he was the most powerful genius they had seen and they thought it would be worth protecting him with their lives. A teleportation formation materialized in the sky, and as soon as they saw it, they felt relieved after realizing the Snow Dragon Corps had arrived. They were above level 30, the Major was a level 51 who completed his third awakening. The legendary demon chuckled and told them their human army wouldn't be able to enter his barrier magic formation. Su King Lion gasped in shock after seeing the Snow Dragon Corps trapped outside. The armies outside figured out why their landing point deviated, and it was because of this barrier. The man with red hair told the Major they could break it with at least two core or wait for it to end. The Snow Dragon Corps Major, Zhu Yu Zhu, asked how long it would last, and the man said it would last five minutes. The Major sighed and ordered them to find information about the people inside and to contact their families to collect their remains. Meanwhile, Zhu Yu's system appeared, saying he had a new mission to exterminate the demon's spawn in exchange for an S-plus grade talent, a fortunate medicine. He smiled and released his magic aura, which alarmed the four blue phoenixes. The legendary demon Spawn noticed his holy aura and realized he was the one who crushed his people. He added that to show respect, he would break him and let him perish in endless agony with his own hand. The fire dragon charged towards him, so Zhui drew his weapon out. The dragon opened its mouth, and a blazing blue orb grew inside its mouth. The dragon's hot breath went in his direction, so Su King Lion called his name worriedly. Zhui swung his hammer covered with his holy aura. The force from it blasted and collided with the dragon's breath. A sharp wind swirled its way up and landed a slice on the dragon's wings. The dragon screeched in pain and lost its balance. It instantly lost its life after crashing on the ground. When the demon's spawn tried to get up, he attacked him while his guard was down. But the demon felt him and swung its sword at the speed of light. The demon was dumbfounded when he only saw a piece of the human's armor, and he flinched when he felt the human right behind him. Zhui smashed his hammer, but the demon had a fast reflex and blocked it. However, the holy light infused on his hammer was too strong for the demon to hold any longer, so he moved out quickly. The demon couldn't believe a level 18 human could par with his power. His aura changed when he said this demon was the first legendary monster he would face. The demon felt like he was boasting, so it charged towards him with his sword, but Chui easily evaded it and simultaneously released a counterattack. The blade of pure white successfully inflicted a stunning effect on the demon, so he summoned the punishment of light. Once the thunderous holy light appeared, the demon grunted and cast his fire demon's shield. The lightning struck the barrier he summoned. The lighting was being absorbed, so Zhui figured he wouldn't defeat this demon by using regular means. The demon spawn growled and called all of his generals. The generals roared in response, and when the legendary demon commanded them to attack, everyone launched at him. He immediately rotated his arms clockwise, and in the blink of an eye, a loud bang was heard along with the holy force from Zhui. Everyone on the ground was stunned to see such immense power. Even the demons got distracted and turned their eyes to the sky. His palm gleamed brightly, and that was when a huge holy hand emerged from the skies, making the legendary demon shiver down its spine. The sacred hand suddenly dashed towards the demons and crushed them like roaches. They couldn't believe Zhu Yi was able to use a skill like this. Giant Chu Ran could feel his succubus bloodline trembling in fear from Zhu Yi's aura. The major thought the kid's power was enough to rival regular magic cannons, so he asked for their information. The red-haired guy told him the kids were all students from Su Kang University, and the Saint Knight was Zhu Yi. After hearing that he was a first-year top one, he sighed in dismay because the kid might perish without having the chance to grow stronger. The demon's spawn suddenly changed its aura. His voice was shaking in anger. He got up and cast his skills on the two legions of demons. One was with bulky muscular demons, and the other was covered with dark magic. He remained calm and composed while different kinds of demons attacked him all at once. When a dark, eerie aura crawled on the ground, the demon's spawn told the cursed demon to stay calm with the human kid, but it suggested attacking the human until he ran out of mana. Zhui knew his mana was depleting and its recovery speed was too slow. He used the Divine Summonings, a one-time secret skill that consumes no mana, and he would be blessed to use the God of Light's power, but he would enter a period of weakness after it ended. The sacred light from the divine summoning pierced through the barrier, creating a hole and cracks in it. 
The demons who touched the light turned to ashes and burned their skin and flesh to bits. Horror was plastered on their ugly faces. The legendary demons spawn got confused by what was happening as they stared at the beaming light from the Saint Knight. The God of Light's wings flapped slowly and went down to Zhui. She embraced his head carefully, leaving the demons with their mouths open. Some tried to catch the falling holy feathers, but as soon as they touched them, their skin was ignited by the holy fire. These pitiful demons. They just wanted to appreciate the pretty feathers and then got burned. The major caught some of the holy feathers and knew it was the divine summoning technique. The red-haired guy asked what it was, and he said it was a top-level skill held by all divine type classes. He added that he had witnessed one from a level 58 priest recover the entire legion to peak condition to hold off against three demon legion sieges until support arrived. The demon spawn wouldn't believe a level 18 saint knight could use a top-level skill. One of his people told him they should retreat now because if the human completes the casting, their entire legion will vanish. He asked how long the construction of the return formation in the dark shadow would take to complete. He replied, saying it'll take a minute so the legendary demon looked at the human and told his people to show their loyalty. He called the demons of flames to heed his command, to sacrifice everything to the demonic son Aurimas. The demon's spawn's body opened in half. The Raskin group was the first to bow and offered themselves to become a part of his great self. Badak's group also bowed to offer their lives, and the legendary demon instantly absorbed their power as he levitated in the air. Dark lightning came out, striking every second after he had transformed. Upon seeing him, the god of light sighed and said it was an ugly and tragic lowly species. She caressed his head and granted her power to him as she moved his hand up. She looked at them, and simultaneously, Chui opened his eyes, beaming with holy light as the god of light said, God said, let there be light. A bang echoed after that release, and a loud explosion shook the ground. The demon's spawn was caught by it, but he glared at him and got up immediately. After his transformation, his level 23 moved up to 43. He put his dark magic aura at the center of his body and created the flame demon's roar of flames. He blasted it in the human's direction and immediately prepared another follow-up attack, a flame demon. That small purple orb suddenly grew bigger and turned into a solar flare. It was so huge, the strongest innate skill of the flame demon kind that could reach 15 million degrees Celsius. He threw the solar flare with all of his strength, but Zhu Yi did not flinch upon seeing it, and when the impact occurred, the demon's spawn was panting for air after that attack. They were all waiting for Zhu Yi's response, wondering if he survived that powerful solar flare. But when the dark aura melted, the demon growled when they saw Zhui scratchless. He looked back and thought one minute had passed, and the return formation should be complete by now. He tried to run, but he lifted his arm and judged the demon in the name of God, Death. When he slashed his arm at him, the demon screamed as he felt his flesh tearing. The sharp and powerful light pushed him to the ground a few meters away. He kept calm and watched the demon crawl to the broken return formation in his critical state but he lost consciousness a few seconds later, defeated. The demons gathered inside a safe place. They were trembling in fear because they couldn't return to their realm now that the door was broken. Once Yui had ensured the legendary demon was defeated, he closed his eyes and let his body fall. His friends immediately ran to catch him as soon as they saw him wobbling. He tried to open his eyes after hearing voices saying to check his status. Before he closed his eyes, he could hear the army going for a search. He felt his body heavy. His breathing pattern was so rapid. He was sweating cold as he turned his head from left to right, trying to wake up. He rapidly got up, panting for air. He felt like he was on a marathon, but his thoughts were interrupted when Jian Chu Ran woke up, saying she was glad he had finally woken up after two days. She was about to inform the others when she remembered something. She pulled his clothes, thanked him for saving her life, and gave him a peck on his cheeks. Jian Chu Ran got up, leaving him flustered. A hologram flashed, indicating his daily mission. He missed two days of daily rewards. Holograms flashed regarding his victory in defeating the demonic sun. He received an S-grade death-resistant skill and a lucky potion. He got curious about the skill he obtained, so he took a knife and rapidly struck himself like a maniac. He smiled after seeing his wound heal within two seconds. He returned the knife after wondering if it would work if he did severe damage to his limb. But he shoved the idea away because he was still recovering. He looked at the lucky potion that would make him lucky within 12 hours. If I would drink this potion, I would go to a lottery and win everything to be a billionaire. He thought of saving it for later but suddenly noticed the holy flame halo, which enabled him to manipulate the fire element. His eyes widened after realizing it was a divine skill. He remembered the holy flame from that day. He figured it could be buffed by the protection of the sacred angel, increasing his damage by 40%. 
he remembered using the holy flame and the punishment of light simultaneously, making him wonder if that made him a dual element mage. He heard some noise from the other room so he got out and went there. The vice captain of the Snow Dragon Legion, a mage named Wang Liang, thanked Zhui for the other day. Zhui asked if he had any other business with him. Wang Liang told him that his final strike destroyed half of the Dark Shadow Valley, and they found out some of the demon's secrets. He threw a mechanical ball, and the room was transformed into a different realm when it expanded. Wang Liang showed him the resources accumulated by their legion across centuries and asked Zhui to choose what he wanted. Zhui was amazed by the number of S-grade treasures everywhere, but he asked Wang Liang if they had the S-grade frozen lotus. He checked it and asked if this was what he was referring to. Wang Liang was sweating coldly as he saw it cost a hundred million points, which was equivalent to his three years salary. Once he was done transferring it to Zhui's headquarters warehouse, he told him to rest. He told him that he would let him hunt monsters with his men to get him closer to their legion if he got bored. He apologized and said he needed to return to school tomorrow to participate in the freshman competition. Wang Lian sighed after realizing he was still a student. Before leaving, he told him he would transfer the frozen lotus to his dorm at the university. Zhuyi released a deep breath now that his sister would be saved. It was almost 12, so he had to finish his daily mission first. In the dormitory of the captain of the Blue Phoenix, Su King Lion, she had just finished bathing and saw her members rushing to her excitedly. Zhu Zhao asked if they could invite Zhu Yi to their team, but she said that Zhu Yi might reject them. Zhu Zhao's sister, Zhu Dan, said they should try it first. They teased her that they saw the captain peeking at Zhu Yi several times. Su King Lion got dressed and went to Zhu Yi's room. She knocked, and he opened the door, wiping his sweat with his cloth and revealing his six packs of abs. She went straight to the question, asking him to join the Blue Phoenix team. She added that Zhu Dan and Zhu Zhao would be heartbroken for some time if he refused. She placed her arms back and said she would like to thank him for saving them at the Tempest Valley. She jumped at him and kissed him on his cheeks. She chuckled and waved goodbye, leaving the luckiest guy who got two kisses in a day. In the army's headquarters, the Snow Dragon Corps Major, Zhu Yuzhu, reported to the higher-ups how they discovered that the demons could now travel across the world through medium cracks. A man asked what it meant, and he said if those demons used the countless medium cracks on their planet, it would put their planet in danger of extinction. Zhu Yuzhu added that only monsters lower than level 30 could pass through a medium-sized crack. A man with horns said they should take action immediately. He told Senator Yang to assign guards for all the medium cracks, and for Senator Zhang to attend the international meeting to report, and observe the reactions of the other countries. One of the senators asked if the kid who defeated the demons was an 18-year-old student. The major nodded, saying the kid was Zhu Yi, a saint knight, a first-place student at Su Kang University. His jaw dropped in shock after hearing that the student had used a divine summoning. The senator with a horn said it was rare to see a saint knight ranking in the first place and wondered if Zhu Yi's family was the descendant of the frozen Zhu family. He told Senator Wang Hui, the headmaster of Su Kang University, to check the student. The major sighed and thought Zhu Yi's life would be bright if these senators gave him their graces. The following day, the freshman competition was finally happening. All the students were called to gather at the field at 10 o'clock in the morning. The gray-haired man was from the elemental house, Chu Huiang, and beside him was a guy from the armament house, Rong Kai. The other people beside them were also housemasters. This woman was from the tactics house, Zhang Ling, and beside her was from the logistics house, Wai Keqing. When Wu Mang from the war house spoke, welcoming every first-year student before them, he explained how the two phases of the competition would happen in the secret realm. But teacher Su Mei'er was worriedly looking for Zhu Yi and Zhang Chiren. The students on the field were buzzing, wondering why Zhu Yi was nowhere to be found. Some were glad. This red-haired guy scoffed because Zhu Yi was too coward to show up in the competition. Wu Mang officially started the first phase of the freshman competition by opening the silver secret realm. A purple aura lingered around the air and burst into the sky. Other than easy, hard, and nightmare difficulty, they added the abyss difficulty, which was dozens of times harder than nightmare difficulty. The students were excited and confident to sweep the abyss difficulty clean. Wu Mang shouted to boost their morale and let them enter the first phase. The realm they would be entering was the bear monster nest. Once the students had selected the level of difficulty they would be taking, Wu Mang smiled to see numerous ambitious students picking nightmare and abyss difficulty. He suddenly noticed that numbers 1 and 3 weren't seen, so Su Mayer nervously said they had gone to the Tempest Mountain Range and hadn't returned yet. Wu Mang got furious and said those kids took things for granted because of their rankings and got late for such an important event. 
Su Mayer tried to explain, but Wu Meng cut her off and said they should put them at the lowest ranking. But out of nowhere, Zhu Yi came rushing with giant Chu Ran on his shoulder like a sack of rice. They apologized for being late and immediately entered the abyss, leaving everyone speechless. He put her down and smiled at each other because they arrived on time. When they got inside the bear monster's nest in an abyss of difficulty, he used his blessing of dawn, god, protection, and courage as soon as he saw three white bears roaring at him. Two were at level 17, and one was at level 18. Chewie got excited, wondering if these monsters could make him go all out as he swung his hammer. Simultaneously, Giant Chu Ran easily slashes the monsters with her slashes, as did the red-haired guy earlier. His hair transformed into flames as he burned the monster to his wrath. The other students focused on their fights, making the teachers feel satisfied by their performance inside one of the hardest realms. Wu Meng asked to focus the camera on the rank one, and they saw him blazing with his light aura. In the blink of an eye, he swiftly defeated 16 bears, clearing the first level within 5 seconds. Chu Huang gasped, wondering how Zhu Yi used the support skill, yet the fire was strong enough to exterminate the bears. Wu Meng said Zhu Yi might have high intelligence, stat, buff, and many more, so they should observe now. He added that he couldn't even point out the strange thing on that halo. His eyes gleamed as he summoned the punishment of light. The 200 bears on the second level got struck for a minute and got defeated instantly. He moved to the next level and encountered a bear with a sword. Midair, he cast the Spear of Victory, and after a few seconds, multiple spears pierced through the huge bear. He took 3 minutes and 29 seconds on the last level. After clearing the abyss and setting the new record, he received a skill book of hammer penance and some points. As he was the first to clear the abyss, he was asked to choose one of the three talents. He was surprised that clearing a silver grade realm could also give him talents because the last realm he cleared was a bronze, which gave him nothing after setting a record. The focus halo outshined the strong protection and the rapid steps, as they would have been more useful for him. Speed is also an important factor in combat, especially when reacting to the enemy's attacks. He held his hand in the air as he felt a nauseating smell coming from the portal before him. He smirked as he hoped the additional level could entertain him. The elemental housemaster, Chu Huian, commended Zhu Yi for his elemental control. They all thought he was all-rounded, making the war housemaster say that he would want to talk to Zhui after this. The other housemasters chuckled and said they should let the student decide which house he would join, so everyone agreed. A familiar voice interrupted. The headmaster chuckled and said the recruitment of the households was starting already. Meanwhile, Zhui entered the additional level, and the place looked like a cult ritual was held there. Huge skeleton was sitting on a throne on top of a hill of bones. Once he stepped on the red magic circle, gushes of evil auras emerged and went to the skeleton. He figured this was an evil god, and if someone believed and prayed to this god, they would gain so much but also have many risks. Even beastmen, elves, and angels pray to evil gods. The bear monster ghost at level 19 growled at him, and upon seeing the human, his deep voice said the human has a delectable smell. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you love this manhwa. Have a good day.